right, so this is gonna be a funny one for me, and this is a hard one for me right now because I see this guy every day. So it's like most things that I would ask a regular guest, I can't ask him because I already know. But I'm gonna ask anyway for you guys, you know, because Levi doesn't really put his life out there like that. So I gotta make him do it for you. So let's go ahead. We're gonna get started. So Levi, what's up, bro? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a hard one for me, man. But take us to the beginning, bro. Not like from like birth, <laughs> but not from like birth. But take us to the beginning of your entrepreneurial. My entrepreneurial journey sort of started on accident, really. I joined the military, we joined together. You know, we, we joined we got the lit and then we ended up joining together. And next morning after getting drunk, we signed papers to enlist. <laughs> but I wanted to make a big change in my life. I joined the Marine Corps and you know, I always sort of like was buying and selling things throughout high school. I was buying and selling like Jordans and different things like that. You know, I had a whole bunch of shoes I was you know, going through. And then I never really considered that as like entrepreneurial thing. Yeah. I never looked at it that way or like thought of like taking that skill set and making it into something else. Yeah. But when I was in the Marine Corps, I started buying and selling cars, you know? So the first car I bought was this like, this Jetta that was like a thousand dollars. And I just bought it because I wanted to learn how to drive a manual car. And I ended up selling that for like 2000. And then I ended up buying like FRS that was like, had a wide body kit, turbocharged. I bought that for like 28,000. Then I sold that for like 32,000 and they traded me a car on top of that. So then like, I just started like buying and selling a bunch of different cars. And I was in Hawaii. So like the market was a little bit different because it's like a secluded island. Yeah. So it was a lot easier to see the way that like what cars were in demand and different things like that. Yeah, and some people had to sell because they were leaving the island. Like on yeah, military. military. It was the same thing in Japan when people had, like were had to leave. It was like, yo, bro, like, I'll get rid of this car for five hundred dollars right now. <laughs> like, I gotta go. So it was really cool because I was able to get good deals, and I was also able to see the market very small because it was or very well because it was such a small market. Yeah. No, that's what's up. That's what's up. And then after that, you know, after the car thing, what came after that, man? Well, you already know what came after that. So, but it's for them. They don't know. We took a big loss because when I got out of the Marine Corps, and we started an entertainment company because in New York, we used to throw like little events and parties and stuff. Some got a little out of hand, but you know, we're like, well, let's just do that with clubs and you know, book artists through that. And we ended up taking a big L at the end of the day, but we bounced back. I want to show you this L for the sake of transparency. It's not something we talk about often. Hold up. <laughs> you know what's funny? I saw the L we took a little earlier today, and I was actually going to post it. So why not talk about it right now? So I'm going to go a little bit into the L. Right? So me and Levi, matter of fact, I'll let you tell the story, bro. I'll let you tell your side of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we were looking for venues first, right? We're like, all right, where can we get like the best deal on venues? And... San Diego and LA, it was a little bit like you had to know somebody because San Diego is run by the Russians, I think, and LA has its own like little industry yeah. like that you gotta tap into. And then we started looking at San Francisco and we ended up getting plugged in with somebody and we got a good deal on a venue. So at that point it was like, all right, we need an artist. And we didn't really like understand the principles of like investing or marketing or leverage or anything that we should have known, we didn't know. So we ended up being like, all right, we're trying to run it on a budget. So we're like, who do we know in our personal networks that we could get access to and do a show for a good price? <laughs> so we are in San Diego and we ended up getting connected with Rob Stone, who at the time <laughs> had a song on the, what was it, the Hot 100 or whatever, yeah, it's Billboard. Dope. It was like top 10, if I'm not mistaken, probably even top five. Yeah. So we ended up booking him because like, it was the best option that we saw at the time. <laughs> but it was the best option we had at the time. So Jay was all for it. He was like, wow, <laughs> this is great. So book the venue, book the artist, and then the tickets never sold. That is what happened. We had no marketing campaign. Either. We had no marketing campaign. <laughs> we had no strategy. <laughs> so we were just like, yo, we're going to throw a lit ass party. We have an artist in it, right? So Levi's from San Diego. <laughs> so, like I said, huge fan of anything San Diego. You know, Padres had the whole nine, 
And um, so Rob Stone ends up dropping this song. And mind you, he's probably the only rapper who's ever made it in the top 10 of any San Diego ever. So Levi was like, yo, Rob Stone fan, bro. I was yeah. about to say. Like, yo, bro, this song hits. So song did hit. The song did hit. So we had this promo video. I, it's funny. I found it on my phone the other day. <laughs> the promo video. They chose the wrong song. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't see it on the camera. Can they? Can't see it, right? Yeah. So we had the song. We had the song. October twenty second, two thousand sixteen. Hey. Long story short, twenty thousand dollar loss. <laughs> twenty thousand dollar L. Off the bat, that was two thousand sixteen, so that was four years ago. So yeah. twenty three minus four. Well, I was twenty years old. No, I was nineteen. Yeah, I, think I, I was nineteen. I was like twenty. Yeah, so he was twenty. I was nineteen. We was over here trying to throw this big show, twenty thousand dollars down the drain. This was after a big up and up because we had just cashed out on the stock market. Yeah, I forgot we were messing with the stock. Yeah. We were making like money somehow. We, yeah, we so didn't know what we were doing there either, but we took a W in stock. Yeah, like big W's, like $10,000 a couple months W. So that's funny, bro. <laughs> that's funny. So go into, tell me, I can obviously, like I said, I know, man, but let's talk about Right after that loss, I know I was still in the military. You were already out working for a Fortune 500 company. What led you to real estate? Real estate, I ended up going to a lot of business conventions because I tore my ACL. So I couldn't work anymore. So I tried finding different ways how I could essentially make money without like having to use my body. You know, So I ended up going to different business conventions, trying to figure out all right, what different avenues are there you know and trying to find a mentor that way we didn't repeat the history of like <laughs> the entertainment company because we had no mentor no guidance no insight about anything so i was taking the time to go out there research look at things and i ended up resonating with real estate because you know it was the same principle of buying at the right price and selling Facts. you know so found somebody to teach us how to fix and flip and I ended up calling you, you're on deployment, and you were like, I just read a real estate book <laughs> and sell a sign property. That told me coincidences. Facts. Coincidences never happened. So you were for it, I was for it. So we just took the leap of faith, invested like $60,000, and then, you know, we just started real estate from there. That's a fact. I'm glad we got that out the way, man. That whole, your, your whole story, bro, because a lot of people don't know that, bro. I mean, you're more, for those of you guys who don't know this, man, Actually, me and Levi get compliments all the time, like literally all the time about our partnership, bro, because we couldn't be more different when it comes to business. Like we are literally polar opposites when it comes to business. And that's why it works so well. So for those of you who don't know, Levi is the brains behind the operation, right? He's the mechanic behind everything. Like he makes it, I might have an idea sometimes, or we both have an idea, but he's the one that implements the idea. So literally none of the businesses that we have would run if it wasn't for Levi. That's just me being honest. He's literally like the mechanic behind it with corporate structures and things like that because we are totally opposites. <laughs> you can sit behind a computer for the whole day learning something new and implementing something new. Whereas I take that information. He basically bottles up the information for me, gives it to me, and I just try to make something happen with it. So I really want to get into that. I want to get into business. I want to talk about business with you, bro, because I know that's your strong suit. That's what people get a lot of value on. And um, partnerships, bro, because, yeah. you know, that's something, you know, me and Levi have been knowing each other since 2012. I would say 2011, 2012-ish. It's 2020 now. And we've done countless business ventures together. And it's funny because, obviously, being an entrepreneur, all of my friends now are entrepreneurs. I'm to the point where everyone around me is an entrepreneur. And the biggest thing I see people struggle with is finding the right partners, finding the right teams, finding the right all of that. And it's yeah. funny because we've never, I wouldn't say we never had a problem with that. <laughs> we've never had a problem with that with each other. <laughs> all right, there's other partners that I ain't gonna name drop anybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about that, bro. What do you think is the biggest key factor in a partnership? The biggest keys in a partnership is like, you can't have the same skill set 
because you know you're just not gonna go in the direction you want because you'll end up competing against each other right mm -hmm. it's like all right we're both good at the same exact thing so you can't have two players playing the same role you know and then at the same time like your underlying values have to also be aligned you know like you can't be with somebody that doesn't resonate with you on like the same frequency or the same type of time facts you know like if me and you have a problem we could be like all right put on the gloves you feel me but like a lot of other people if you tell them that they'll be like well like what are you talking about yeah so you have to make sure that like your values align and you know you sort of come from like the same sort of background that way you could understand where your partner's coming from in a sense that's a fact and it goes back, you know, we were both in the military and stuff, bro. And I think the military is a prime 1,000% example of toxic leadership and toxic partnerships. Yeah. <laughs> because you have people who just been in long enough with no skill set at all that are put in a position where they're able to lead you and stuff like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I think that's important for anything in the team, like, like having the same values, essentially. Yeah, I remember, like, I got to a point where I was driving, like, an AMG, and I was like 19 years old and I had like my upper leadership, like staff sergeants and stuff. They're like hating on me. They're like, how is this kid driving AMG and I'm driving like a pickup truck? And I was just like, yo, like you're supposed to be leading me. Like, well, how are you coming at me with hate? Because I'm <laughs> doing something good, you feel me? Now that's a fact. You know what's funny? I had this leader, his name is, I will name drop this one. Staff Sergeant Hasso, <laughs> what's <is> his name? <laughs> and it's funny because I've been coming at this man's head on Facebook for the last month and I actually tagged him yesterday because going back to the whole thing, right? I realized like if I have a problem with someone, we, we're the type of people and because we come from a similar backgrounds where I'm like, yo, bro, like what's up with this? Why are you doing this? That's funny to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But other people, most people, humans, they, they try to avoid conflict by nature, right? Yeah. It's human nature to want to avoid conflict. And I realized like, yo, I've been having a problem with this dude for like two years, bro. So I tagged him on Facebook yesterday. <laughs> so I tagged him, I said, yo, if you go three rounds with me in the ring, I'll donate $3,000 to the charity of your choosing. Yeah. And he hadn't responded. <laughs> yeah, I publicly called somebody out too the other day because I just don't like when people think they could come at me a certain way. It's like, all right, whether you're right or wrong, you're not going to come at me however you want. You know, you're going to come at me from a place of respect. That's a fact. So I agree with you, obviously, a thousand percent on the partnership part. But what about business, bro? How'd you get so educated? Because we've been in business forever, bro, together. Yeah. And like, what made you more interested, I guess, in the actual analytical side of stuff, like the business structure? I think it's just like a gift even going back to like first grade like first grade they used to give us like math tests to like addition subtraction multiplication and throughout the year you're supposed to complete a certain amount of tests right so the same class start at the same point and then each time you pass a test you advance to the next level yeah and that was supposed to last like the entire school year but i ended up finishing that like in half the year you know so like math and like analytical things has always been a strong suit and then like in third grade, I think I took like one of the little IQ tests and I was like identified as like a gifted and talented educated education student or whatever. Yeah. So I think, you know, my comprehension level has just naturally been above average. And in the military, like I was a helicopter mechanic. So yeah. I was able to like literally visualize all the components of a helicopter inside of my head. That's when like I really realized that like I was very good at being able to visualize a system and understand how everything operates together, you know. So and I think that's one of the main reasons why I'm able to do what I am able to do in business because I could see it from a very you know outside perspective at a very macro level and see how everything comes together. Yeah, you know, and not a lot of people do that. That's a fact. And I was going to mention that if you didn't mention it. I was going to mention, like, those of y'all didn't know. So he, like, as a kid, had, like, a genius IQ. He was supposed to be, like, Albert Einstein or some shit. And now he, we're just here wholesaling houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, nah, nah, that's a fact, bro. And, like, what are some ways you, like, educate yourself, man? Like, when you find something interesting, like, walk us through. Because this is the thing. When people don't realize that educating yourself is a process, right? Yeah. Something that pisses me off is when people, like, I've done my research on this. Like, bro, do you even know how to do research? 
Facts. <laughs> like, people don't realize doing research is a process. People think doing research is 5G bad for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, like, with me. I'm like, people don't even realize learning is a process. Like, doing research is a process, yeah. right? But when I'm trying to learn something new, I read in depth about some studies that have been done, right? And then I read in depth studies about the opposing side. Of yeah. it. Like, there's read, always two sides. Yeah, there. there's always two sides, bro. So I always try to do research of the opposing side, too. I go out of my way to find opposing viewpoints on it. And, like, people don't even realize, like, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So, like, take us through your process of, you think of a concept, right? Like, making donuts <laughs> what's next through that process like what so like speaking from like a neuro-linguistic standpoint there's four stages of learning right yeah there is unconscious competence which means like you have no idea what you don't know mm-hmm. right then there's conscious incompetence which is like hey bro i heard that you can make a lot of money making donuts right so now i know of it but i don't know how to do it right so that's the second stage and then the third stage is conscious competence where i go out of my to learn how to do that yeah and now I have to be consciously doing it right yeah so it's not like second nature and the fourth level is basically second nature where it's unconscious competence so you could do things unconsciously right now to go through that process obviously what you don't know you don't know yeah you know so that's what you start off with yeah so it's really about getting out of your comfort zone because let's say like oh I want to make money yeah you have to go find people that are making money you know, and you're probably not gonna know anybody that makes money. So you could literally just Google, you know, where can I find people that make money? Go to a golf course, go to different networking meetings, you know, surround yourself by people that are gonna give you this next level of insight into different avenues that you can make money in. Yeah. You know, and then once you hear these different insights, you know, everything is gonna have its pros and cons. Right? Everybody thinks like there's one perfect business model that has no downside. There's pros and cons to every single thing. You just have to pick one and be like, all right, this suits me best. Or right? just try it, figure out if it works or not. And then take the next level of finding an actual mentor or doing hard research, whether it be like watching videos on YouTube, reading books, you know, take that next step of actually finding people who are successful at it and getting their mentorship, whether that be in person by hiring a mentor directly or YouTube or somebody that writes a book, but make sure they have those results that you're seeking, Right. you know? And then it comes into implementation. Once you know how to do something, you have to implement it to the point where it becomes second nature to you. At this point, like making money is second nature to me. Like, I know that sounds very broad, but like, I feel like making money is just something that happens without me thinking about it. Nah, I feel the same way, bro. Like, I feel like, and it's like, it's not even like on some, on some like saying it cocky, right? Because anybody who knows me know like, yeah, I talk my shit here and there, bro. I'm really humble. I got a really good heart, bro. I love helping people. I just like know it's going to come almost, you know? Yeah. Like, it's crazy because we just got a new car. <laughs> Company car. Tax write off. Top secret. Top secret. But just know this shit is heat. But the crazy thing is I was thinking about it the other day. So originally we were gonna get a different kind of car, yeah. and we posted it on Instagram. You guys probably saw it. Posted a couple forums on there, right? And most of the people that commented were like, "Yo, get this one like mine, or get this one like mine." And I realized, like, yo, everybody around me has a supercar. And like, not saying supercar defines who you are, right? There's a lot of people out there with supercars, with no running businesses, no assets and stuff. But like, I'm talking about these are people who like have businesses all make seven figures and they all like either you know have a Lambo Bentley or about to get a Rari and things like that and I realized like that saying is true you know you hang out with four broke people you're gonna be the fifth one you hang out with four rich people you're gonna be the fifth one and it's almost like you don't hang out with broke people with the intention to be broke but you just pick up on their habits you're picking up on what kind of conversations they're having which are guarantee you it consists of talking about other people and things like that whereas on the flip side we're getting just by chilling with our network bro we get so much business knowledge that we don't even know like we don't even pick it up like for us it's like we're getting plugged in with people unconsciously it's like it's just happening you know we went out to dinner the other day and we were 
there was like at least eight figures <laughs> of net worth on that table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel you when you say it's like second nature and that's the point you should come to, bro. Yeah. And, you know, everybody looks for that magic pill, you know? Everybody relies a lot on techniques, you know? So like, touching on the point where you said, you know, you're going to be the average of the five people you surround yourself with, you know? And that's cool, right? Like, but realistically, you're not going to be able to surround yourself by millionaires if you don't change you know your framework first yeah so like saying that technique everybody relies on techniques right but it's not gonna fix the root America in general is like symptom oriented right yeah. there's a symptom right the symptom is I'm broke so they look for a magic technique that's gonna elevate them right so let's look at like the one that a lot of motivational speakers use is like cutting off toxic people from your life. Yeah. Right. Surround yourself by better people, cut off toxic people. Right. All right. Cool. Hey, let me go see. All right. Who's around me that's toxic. All right. Let me cut off th- three or five people. Yeah. Right. And now, okay, great. I'm not surrounded by toxic people, but realistically that was a symptom, right? What is the root? Now, the root is there's something inside of you that was attracting or allowing those toxic people into your life. So you could cut off those people and that technique will work, but it might not have a lasting effect because the root issue is you're still attracting toxic people or you're a toxic person yourself. So you cut off these people, you're going to get a little high and, you know, you're going to feel great because those people aren't in your life draining your energy you're going to go up, you're going to elevate your frequency a little bit, and you may resonate for a second with higher level people, but you'll eventually go back to that same frame you're in because you never identified what was the root and how do I align myself with a better surroundings, right? Yeah. How do I align the core of myself to people who are better suited for a higher status, higher levels of life, right? So until you really dig down deep and figure out what is the root issue and you're always looking for that magic pill or that magic technique that's going to bring you to the next level of success you're not going to be able to sustain that until you realign your purpose or yourself with what you actually want because like okay i could cut off toxic people but i'm not fixing myself i'm not aligning myself with higher level people i'm focused on cutting toxic people off because i've heard that's a technique that works yeah right and that's true you have to remove toxic people but if you align yourself with elevating right Mm -hmm. with surrounding yourself by higher level people if you change your route naturally you're going to stop allowing those people to be toxic in your life or they'll just fade away on their own Right. If they're unable to be a healthy dynamic within your life, at that point, once your alignment changes, they'll fade away if they can't readjust. Thanks. You know, so I feel you really just have to make sense of what is going on inside of you. And, you know, for me personally, when I started, I relied very heavily on multiple disciplines. Right. The disciplines being different types of techniques, like being sober, waking up early. And I was streaky with waking up. Early. I was about to say it, bro. Come I was on, streaky, bro. but it was something that I tried. But being sober, <laughs> being sober, I was sober for like three years when I was in the military. And that was a discipline because I heard that, you know, successful people don't spend time drinking or doing drugs or partying all the time. Right. So I just took it to the extreme. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to remove it completely from my life. Yeah. I've been vegetarian and vegan for five years. So I took discipline to the extreme to try to force myself to higher levels. Yeah. And for a long time, you know, it felt like I was spinning my wheels because I was getting to certain points. And then it was, you know, not lasting in a sense. So when I wasn't getting the lasting effect that I needed, I was getting frustrated and I was disciplined to the point where, you know, like when I was traveling in Ecuador. Yeah. I was so disciplined on the fact that I had to be and maintain that discipline that I didn't really enjoy that trip because I couldn't eat. (laughs) And like, why was I vegan? Or why was I vegetarian? I was vegetarian because I wanted to be healthy. Yeah. Right? Now, I never really identified that within myself. I was just relying so heavily on the discipline of it because I was trying to force my way to a higher level. So now I realize that my alignment is with health. So if I was traveling and I was starving myself, that's probably not very healthy, yeah. right? 
So if I'm traveling somewhere where like it doesn't suit that diet, then I just have to do what's best for my health at that point. And that may not be a vegan or vegetarian diet. Yeah. You know, so like once you align yourself with what you actually want, you don't really need to rely on disciplines or techniques. No, that's a fact. I think something interesting about what you said, bro, is the fact that I have this conversation. It's been popping up more and more (laughs) where some people read like books and stuff and they're like this is what i have to do to be successful right yeah. and there was actually my boy david was having a conversation with uh scott trench so scott trench runs the whole bigger pockets podcast and stuff yeah and he hates waking up early yeah hates it i hate it too <laughs> and it's funny because scott trench he has the author of the miracle morning hopping on right the Miracle Morning is a book about having the perfect morning routine. <laughs> like waking up at 5, 5.30. So it's hilarious because Scott Trench is talking about I fucking hate waking up early, right? Yeah. So it goes back to the whole discipline thing, right? So there's not one thing that you need to do to be successful. There's no one thing. I think if there is one thing, it's probably be consistent. But even that... I know some people right now, you know, when we lived in LA, we met some real characters that probably weren't consistent, but were rich as hell. Yeah. Right? There's these dudes who got rich off meme pages. Yeah. Like millionaires off meme pages. That didn't take hard work. Dude had a talent. (laughs) And then he promoted. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's a lot of things out there. There's not one thing, right? So like people like hard work, right? Yeah, that's one of them. But you could also be working hard with the wrong information, right? Educate yourself. 100%. 100%. There's a lot of people who are educated who don't take action. So then what's the point of waking up early? Yeah, that's one of them. But if you wake up early and have an amazing routine but aren't educated or have hard, hard work, then what's the point of waking up early? Congratulations, right? What else are you going to hold over people's head every day? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a mixture of things, bro. I think it's a mixture of things mixed thing together it just makes a crazy concoction for success, bro. Yeah. You know what? I think behind it all, like, you have to have a very strong underlying belief in yourself at the end of the day. Facts. Because I feel like I had a very independent childhood, you know? And now that I'm an adult, I don't fear failing, you know? Anything I do, like, let's say, like, going back to the research aspect, like, you're never going to get a complete picture until you actually go out and do it. Like, that's not thousands of dollars in education you as well and you know you're never gonna fully understand what needs to be done or what's happening until you just do it you know and a lot of people just get stuck waiting for that complete picture because they don't have a strong enough belief in themselves to figure out whatever missing information is by just doing it because you're gonna learn everything you need by actually doing the action facts and then i'd be lying if i said i didn't fear failure you know that is a big fear. Like, not that it's a fear of mine that I'm like, oh, I'm not going to take action because I failed. But that's actually a driving motivation of mine. Yeah. The, the fact that nobody ever wants to be the guy who had money. That's a fact. That's one of the driving factors of mine. People like me having to end up in places that I've already been yeah. because I didn't work hard enough. So, you know, I'd be lying if I say I wasn't a fear of failure. You know what I'm saying? And again, that goes into the, the what we just said, bro, that there's no one thing. <laughs> it's a different mix of things for different people. I think, what do you say is one of like a piece of advice that is like, all right, there's no way you can misconstrue this is wrong. <laughs> like, what's one piece of advice you would give people who, who are interested in getting started being an entrepreneur? So I'd say there's two things. And this is just like in general. But one thing I believe is that the true mark of intelligence is to be able to entertain an idea without accepting it as true. Right. And the other thing is only fools speak in absolutes. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people take everything for face value. Right. They accept everything they hear as true. And then they'll turn around and go speak that same thing they heard as a truth to other people. Facts. Right. And that's speaking in absolute. Right. So I feel like not enough people understand that there's two sides to every coin, Mm -hmm. right? There's always a perspective on the opposite end of the spectrum that you have to account for, right? Or at least look at. You can't just hear everything and be like, oh, wow, that just run with it, you know? Because a lot of people just, that I know personally, you know, you know, they do that. 
And then they'll take that and they'll go preach that to other people without having any real backing behind it. Mm -hmm. They're just, in a sense, it diminishes your value. Yeah. Because, you know, one, if it's something that a very polarizing truth, right? Let's say you're talking about politics, right? Everything in terms of politics is all speculation to a certain degree. So when you're speaking on something like that in the absolute, Right, you're opening yourself up to a lot of scrutiny. Scrutiny, yeah. Instead of saying, "Well, I've heard this," or "I entertain this idea," what are your thoughts on it? You know, a lot of people like to be in the position where they're educating others rather than having a conversation. But what do you think about the? So, just to play devil's advocate, I agree with you. Like when it comes to politicians, like I see both sides, which is, and I'm a sales guy have to and that's yeah. what makes me so good at sales right but the, the devil advocate question to that is what do you think about when people say you have to stand for something you know what I'm saying some people are like hey you have to but you have to draw a line in the sand at, at one point I stand firm in my values right things that have to do with behaviors around me or the way I carry myself that's why I'm absolute because that's who I am mm-hmm. you know like 5G that has nothing to do with who I am Politics that has nothing to do with who I am. At the end of the day, like yeah, go vote, do whatever you have to do. But the decision makers are gonna make the rules of the game. I have to play by those rules. Yeah, but know? but isn't it a let's say for example who you vote for, right? So it's like you're absolute in who you are, right? Mm-hmm. But isn't who you vote for a representation of that? Yeah. Would you wouldn't you say that? That's an action though. That's a fact. Right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if I say I voted for somebody, I voted for somebody because something I saw alignment that that would be beneficial in my interest. Right. And that interest is speculative. Right. So I'm not absolute on, OK, I believe that this person is going to achieve this and this will benefit me. Right. That's a belief. And I understand that's open to speculation. But when it comes down to the physical action of me submitting that ballot, that's an absolute, you know, that's an action that comes from my value because I believe that will benefit me. Yeah. But whether that benefits me at the end of the day or not, like, I won't know until it physically happens. No, I feel you. No, that's a fact. I was always told not to talk about politics, um, you know, when I was starting off because it's such a polarizing issue. Yeah. So let's do it right now. I don't know anything about politics. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be honest. Now, look, gun control, I think that <laughs> I think that I should be able to own a tank if I wanted to. I don't think I'd be comfortable with you owning a tank. But look, point of the Second Amendment, which I'm, hey, I plead the second strongly, right? <laughs> the point of the Second Amendment was that you had to be able to fight back against a tyrant government. Yeah. So how am I going to fight back if they have a tank? I need one too. <laughs> so that was the point of it. Right? Hey, whether they agree with it or not now, it's out there. That's what this country was founded on. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Shout out to NRA. I'm a sponsor. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we were in work on getting them here. But what do you think about gun control, bro? I don't know. I have guns. I love guns. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I work out that way I can protect myself with my hands if I need to. But in case that my hands fail, I have a gun for backup. No, that's a fact. Nah, I feel you. But let's talk about another dis- divisive topic. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, guys. We're not going to get into it right here. But no, that's a fact, bro. I just wanted to throw that out there, bro, because nobody... You know what it, the thing about me, bro? I, I don't claim I know a lot about politics. But it's funny. I did a social experiment with myself <laughs> one time. Going back to the whole absolute thing, right? I was born in New York. I grew up with a, you know, minority family, right? English is my second language, actually. I didn't learn how to speak, like, proper English. I was probably, like, eight. And so I grew up as completely liberal, like, completely democratic. Like, yo, anybody on the other side is racist as hell, right? So it was crazy. So I watched this video randomly one time on somebody else's phone (laughs) about this guy saying that... It's crazy that so many people now, in this day of age, speak in absolutes because of social media. Because the same algorithm, you know how like things that you're interested in, yeah, it sells you 
on Facebook, on Instagram, right? It tries to sell you. So it reinforces your beliefs. Exactly. So the thing that it plays the same algorithm works for news. So you only see news, only see news that you already agree with. Yeah. And then your friends are posting that same news. And then it's popping up on your timeline. And it's like, you're like, bro, I knew I was right about this. Yeah. So it reinforces your belief so heavily, bro. Yeah. And then I ended up making a Facebook page. And all I followed was far right wing news. Yeah. <laughs> like far, far, far right, bro. Where I was like, all right, cool. Let me understand. And, and it's crazy because I'm like, wow, some of these things I really agree with. And some of these things were taken out of context in this article and things like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I realized that there was already like a war on our minds for our attention, you know? And that's where I realized I had that's the only right way to do research, bro, honestly, looking at both sides of the coin. Yeah. And like the whole concept of like that reinforcing belief, it's like that ego investment almost, you know, because you identify more with that side of things more and more. So you're actually becoming a part of that, like within your person, you know? So whether it's right or wrong, you're gonna protect that belief because now your ego is invested into it, yeah. right? So if I was wrong as hell, and you came to me with, you know, understanding of the correct framework of it, I would protect myself because I have so much of my self invested in that. If I were to be wrong, I would sort of lose the understanding of who I am. Facts. You know, it's funny because like you say you're liberal growing up. But I honestly, I don't know what liberal means. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about politics. And like, I want to make that point to say like, when someone is seen as smart, they think like they're smart about everything. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of things I'm dumb as hell about. Like I could understand something very easily, yeah. but I have to actually like take time to sit down and like, all right, let me spend like a week to just dive into it and then I can understand it. But there's a lot of things where I just don't care to understand because I don't feel like it'd be to my benefit. And politics are one of those things. <laughs> nah, that's a fact. I mean, there's certain things like that. I like that's the funny thing, bro. Um, I was actually told talking to Tony about that the man behind the camera. Shout out to Tony. But I was like, yeah, I don't take advice from somebody just off of the fact of who they are. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like somebody could be rich as hell. They read my mentor, but they might not be the healthiest people. So if they try to give me health advice, like I'm gonna still listen to them, but that's not necessarily something I'm gonna take at face value. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I always talk about that all the time, bro. Like, yeah, there's some people who they're amazing at what they do. That doesn't mean they're amazing at everything. Yeah, even me. Like you shouldn't take my advice for everything. Right? I'm good at business. I'm good at wholesaling. I'm good at sales. I'm, but I wouldn't tell you to take my political advice. Do your own research. <laughs> you know what's a good piece of advice that your dad gave me, though? What? He told me, never say you don't know. Always have an opinion on something. So I always have an opinion on something. But if I don't know a subject, I'll also let that be known as well. Yeah. Like, I don't have a very deep understanding of this. But from my, like, what I know right now, my opinion on this would be this. Yeah. Right? Because you never want to be a person that comes to the table saying, I don't know. Yeah. Because then you're showing you don't value your own opinion. So other people won't value it on any topics. Yeah. That's a fact. And you know, it's funny. I read a book recently where I'm actually applying that more. Like, even when, like, I'm always having an answer for something. Right? I think, like you said, even if I don't, like, I would be like, hey, look, I don't have a very educated answer on this subject. I don't know much about it. From what I do understand from what y'all saying, it's that, you know, alligators are better than crocodiles. <laughs> right but even like with my girl even in my personal life if my girl's asking me for a nail color I'm never like I don't know whatever you want right because I feel like that's like just like you gotta know what to answer period yeah. you know what I'm saying and like it it goes back to like in the military we had a corporal's course right there was this thing where we got graded on making some decisions and it was like literally that's what the whole course was about yeah. about making a decision and there was this part where we were, you know, fake walking through the woods, fake guns and stuff. And it was like, oh, there's a patrol coming. What do you do? And I was like, all right, you got to get on this side. You got to get on that side. That's it. Boom. It was like in a split second, I made that decision. Yeah. And it was like, oh, cool. Pass it. Boom. That was a terrible decision because they would have shot at each other. Yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't what it was rated on. It was just on making a decision. And it was crazy how much some people wouldn't make a decision. Yeah. They'd stop, they'd be like, okay, what do you guys think? Right? Yeah, I made the wrong decision, but I made a decision. <laughs> I, like, I think that goes back 
like decision is a, almost a form of conflict. Yeah. You know, people are naturally adverse to conflict. So like it goes back to your mind isn't designed to be successful. And that's what a lot of people do not understand. Your mind is designed for survival, right? Survival meaning that it's gonna do the bare minimum, bare minimum yeah. right? So it's gonna avoid making hard decisions, it's gonna avoid conflict, and it's gonna avoid trauma. And people don't realize this. So like when they're not getting results, it's mainly because they're on autopilot, right? So they don't wanna make decisions and they can't figure it out. You know, because they're not actually in control of what their mind is doing. You have to reprogram your brain to be successful, you know? And for me, like, the way I was brought up and programmed, like, my flight or flight response was all the way towards fight. Yeah. You know, so I was already naturally, you know, geared towards being able to make decisions and facing conflict. And I feel like you had a similar upbringing. So, like, that was never something I really struggled with. But there is other traumas and other things that I've had to work on. And it comes from being able to understand that like, your brain is literally designed to survive, right? It's gonna do the bare minimum. It's gonna avoid any trauma in your life, right? So when people don't deal with trauma, it actually comes back around and you may not understand like why things are repeating itself or why certain behaviors are happening is because you never dealt with the underlying trauma because your brain's always gonna avoid that. Nah, facts, bro. I mean, we're just like naturally, honestly designed to be lazy, you know? You give somebody enough stimulation and make them comfortable, they'll forget about their dreams, bro. Yeah. Because, hey, you made it past survival mode. You know what I'm saying? But some people don't realize there's a difference between survival and really living life. Yeah. There's a big ass difference, you know? So that's a major key right there, bro. And obviously, I'm going to post this on a podcast, bro. But if anybody watching this wants to get in contact with you, bro, how can they get into contact with you, bro? What's the best way? Instagram, Levi Builds Wealth. L-E-V-I. Not Y. A lot of people think it's Y. So, Levi Builds Wealth. But nah, man. So, guys, we're actually about to cut this one right now. But you know why? It's because we're actually cooking up something spicy. Spicy, spicy for all of you guys watching. I didn't want to let the cat out of the bag, but... Levi is actually doing something that we've never done before. Never, ever, ever. So anybody who's interested in actually, like, learning how to run a business, I'm talking about asset protection, corporate structure, like, team building. This applies to any business. It's not real estate directly. We've helped other people in multiple businesses. This is the guy you're going to want to get in contact with. And you know what? We're actually going to put that together right now. So I appreciate you guys. I got one one more question. One more question for you for me yeah what is your purpose man honestly you know i've asked myself that a lot lately because i feel like as you grow so should your purpose you know what i'm saying and it's like i think everybody probably starts off this way i feel like few people really start off way 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 at the top and we're getting to the point now where i remember when i was younger like i'd meet somebody who's successful i'd be like yo bro this dude's a millionaire yeah, and I thought that was like super cool. Yeah, and I like, see a Lambo or something. Yeah, yeah, and I thought it was super cool. But like now, it's like whatever. Everyone's a millionaire that we know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like there are certain people, and I'm sure you feel that there are certain people you meet that you're like, oh, this dude is gonna be a billionaire. <laughs> like there are certain people you meet where you're like, oh, this dude is gonna be a billionaire. Like, this dude is a genius. Like, this dude has so much foresight of the future. This dude's going to be a billionaire. And for those of you who don't understand the concept of a billion and and a million, a million seconds ago was 11 and a half days. A billion seconds ago was 1987. So, I think it starts off like this, right? First, your purpose should be to take care of yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup. Then take care of your family in whatever way you can, right? Whether that means buy groceries here and there. And then maybe take care of your community, right? Give back to the community that up brought you so you can help people on along the way, right? And then maybe give back to your country if you're into that kind of thing, get into politics and things like that, right? And then give back to the world, right? You see billionaires, the majority of millionaires have a global impact and that's how they became that way, right? So I think I'm to the point right now where I, before it was like, you know, I just wanted to be able to help my family. And now I realize that I want to 
not help them, not retire them, but I want to be able to fund their purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to help my family, everybody in my family, find their purpose and help them fund that. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it's going back to the whole stimulation thing, right? Like, man, I, gave, I retired them. Cool. What do they do now? Yeah, they have fun retirement the whole nine. But are they living out their purpose? I don't know. Yeah. They might not even know they have to ask themselves that question. So, like, you know, figuring out what my family's purpose is and help them fund that. You know, maybe my dad wants to open up a, a fucking taco shop. And that's what's going to make him happy. And if I can help him do that, I think that's dope. Yeah, I feel that. And then besides that, besides my immediate purpose, it's also to bring as many people up with me. You know, inspire people, bro. I really do like public speaking. And, you know, I want to be able to find a vehicle where it's not going to be easy for people. It's going to be a streamlined process for people to be able to build wealth and change their mindsets so that it puts them in a mission to find their purpose and help people find their purpose as well. Yeah. And before you know it, bro, it's contagious, bro. If positive energy is contagious, this is going to spread. That's what I say, mine is. That's dope. I fucked with that. Yeah, I thought about it this morning. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious. I'm dead ass serious. I thought about it this morning. I went to a float tank this morning. And it's funny. So my girl booked me the appointment to the float tank. I didn't even know. She was like, two nights ago, she was like, yo, babe, I made you an appointment for this float tank and shit. And I was like, oh, bad. It looked dope. I, I told her I wanted one in my house. Yeah. It's only $9,000 to buy one. And shit, one was fire. And when I woke up this morning, so my appointment was at 9. I woke up at 8.40 and it was 15 minutes away. <laughs> so I was already running late. So my girl was sleeping when I left. And I had just recently read a book that talked about purpose because yeah. there's people you got your purpose and you got your influence purpose right so like you know you become a, a cop because your dad was a cop yeah yeah and then you realize oh shit like, this was never really my purpose it was his purpose so i've been going through that lately, trying to find my actual purpose not my influence purposes because there's a times where i'm like this was my purpose when i dig deeper i'm like no nah, that's influence purpose you know what i mean yeah. so I've been going back and forth about that a lot and she knows and it's funny because she was knocked out she was sleeping when I woke up and I had to leave in five minutes so picture I got brushed my teeth got dressed all in five minutes bro and as I was leaving the door she then I said yo hopefully this helps you with that purpose question you've been asking <laughs> and that's literally what was all on my mind while I was in the tank oh. impressing a few people but I'm not gonna do that <laughs> but guys with that being said that was a good question bro I haven't had anybody ask me that with that being said, guys, we're about to cook something up spicy for you guys to fulfill that purpose of being able to put people on to whatever they want to do, what their purpose is. Thank you for having me, bro.